So you thought I forgot about my geography, kids. Nah, I got you guys. Don't worry about it. Um, I haven't really posted all that much geography content. There's literally just a few videos on the channel. So if you guys would like me to make a few geography videos and preparation for well your prelim papers paper one paper two maybe finals just depending on like where you are in the year if you're watching this year or 2026 2027 just let me know but for now some last minute tips for your geography paper one so this is a three hour question paper which is written on a separate day from paper two you don't write it on both days that would be absolutely crazy and the mark allocation for this paper is 150 marks i've taken this straight from the geography guidelines for grade 12s this year it's dbe caps and the question paper it consists of two questions okay namely section a section b um so nothing really new to you guys uh climate and weather and geomorphology that forms part of section a there's two questions in section a and section b uh, geographical skills and techniques basically map work okay that's just big big words for map work 2.1.4, section A consists of two questions of 60 marks each, so 60 times 2, some quick maths, that leads us to 120 marks. And section B consists of just one question, 30 marks, that is going to be your big map work question. We've got 30 marks there, and 120 plus 30 gives us that grand total of 150. All three questions are compulsory. Look, this is not LO or business studies um, where you have options, okay? You don't have options. They're compulsory. Whatever they give to you, you must complete. Okay, so I do this with most last minute tips videos, so you guys are probably familiar with it. 150 marks to be completed in 120 minutes. Okay, that is a massive blunder by Goon School, sorry. It's a three hour question paper. That's 180 minutes. Sorry. Lucky this is not a Mads video. You guys would have lost all, uh, <laughs> all, all hope in me. So that basically, it leads us to 1.2 minutes per mark. So basically for every five mark question, it should take you six minutes. So yeah, just some basics there. So if you have a 20 mark question, multiply it by 1.2 and so on and so on. Okay, so in paper one, uh, just a quick rundown of everything in climate and weather specifically here. It's terrible underlining. You've got your standard stuff with um, mid-latitude cyclones, tropical cyclones, uh, and all the general characteristics, areas of formation, conditions necessary for formation, stages of development, associated weather patterns. It's your usual stuff, okay? Uh, mid-latitude cyclones, they're... They're mid. That's that's a really horrendous joke. Sorry you had to hear that. Um, same thing with subtropical anticyclones, um, location and identification uh, in the context of a South Atlantic high pressure cell, South Indian high pressure cell, Kalahari high pressure cell, um, and the general characteristics of those uh, three high pressure cells and the influence of anticyclones on South Africa's uh, weather and climate. Look, there are a few more things. Those tend to be the more key topics. Um, then we take a look at valley climates, uh, slope aspects, some definitions um, and influence. So those anabatic winds, catabatic winds, uh, inversions, thermal belts, all that good stuff. Um, those were valley climates and then more stuff on urban climate. So, for example, like reasons for differences between rural and urban climates or urban heat islands, pollution domes, all of that. Um, and nice one here. Few students tend to battle with it. Um, slightly higher order thinking type questions here. Interpretation of synoptic or synoptic weather maps. Some students find it very easy, but yeah, I guess it just depends on how your teacher has gone through it and your own understanding. Uh, I'll be happy to make a few videos about this for you guys. So like use of international symbols, identification, characteristics, uh, satellite imaging as well uh, does fall part of this section. Just to change color there to a, oopsie, to a nice little light green. Geomorphology. Um, so for example, uh, drainage base basins is the big one. Uh, drainage basin specifically in a South African context, so all the concepts that come with that, uh, catchment areas, river systems, confluence, watershed, um, infiltration, the various types of rivers that you have, the big four, uh, permanent, periodic, 
episodic, uh, exotic, and a bunch of definitions, identification, all of that, as well as uh, discharge of a river falls under that section. Uh, this one over here, it's a very fun word to say, fluvial processes. So river profiles, river grading, river rejuvenation, river capture. Those are the big ones in the sections and like, you know, various subsections within all of that. Uh, catchment and river management. So those are like the big three sections, if I could put it like that, in geomorphology. So drainage basins in South Africa, fluvial processes and catchment and river management. So the definition, the causes, the importance of it all. Um, and catchment and river management, it tends to be the slightly smaller part of geomorphology. All are examinable. And then geographical skills and techniques, hard to get away from the section. You've been dealing with it literally since you were doing like grade A geography. Or maybe, you know, back when you were like super, super tiny doing social sciences in primary school. So yeah, just um, usual stuff, nothing too new. Map work techniques like contour lines, contour intervals, compass direction, everybody's favorite true bearing, magnetic bearing as well, some map scales. Uh, and a bunch of calculations that come with it. Then uh, with the discussion here of topographic maps, uh, usual one is to 50,000 topographic maps, uh, application of grade 12 paper one, uh, especially on climate and weather. So using your geographic skills um, in the climate and weather section. So like a nice integrative type question there, aerial photographs and orthophoto maps, uh, and then GIS, uh, the geographic information system. Some teachers call it just are you, are you just, you know, hey, look, if you're from Western Cape, I, I hope you laughed at that one. Okay. It's very, very bad language here. Um, components of GIS, sources of information, all of that and everything that comes with it. So look, this paper, I wouldn't say it's a softer paper. It's more difficult. I find it a bit more enjoyable. I do like paper one a bit more than paper two, but paper two is also exciting. So actually I can't really compare the two. Just remember that you do have uh, two big questions in section A and just one question um, in section B. Everything, you must do it, whether it's a short question, long question, there's no options. And yeah, try your very best. You guys are almost at the finish line with matric geography. Maybe a few of you will go on next year, study a BSc. Maybe a few of you will... I don't know, become topographers, geologists, you know, they always say uh, geologists rocks. Yeah, that that's the best ge geology and well geography joke that I have. So I'm gonna leave things there. Good luck for your paper, guys. You can do it. I believe in you. Bye.